Hey, what's up guys? My name is Matt. I'm a content producer for Odds Jam. And uh, today I'll just be placing some $100 positive EV bets for tonight's Monday Night Football game. So I know I took a little bit of a hiatus past couple days just because I had some busy life stuff to deal with. Um, but I'm back and I'm uh, providing some, uh, some bets that have gone pretty well recently. If you're looking at uh, just some positive value plays, up over 1400 total. And just from last week alone, up almost 660. And a lot of that was from positive expected value. So it's been going well recently. I already have them locked here um, in these two sports books, but I wanted to um, talk to you about them. And the first one is this Tyler Lockett over three and a half receptions. Um, looks like Pinnacle has it at minus 204. We're getting it at minus 140. Um, so I locked it in here, as you can see on Caesar. Uh, I just want to do that before I started. And um, I know that Tyler Lockett is kind of a, uh, I don't know, he's, he's, he's not exactly the most loved fantasy football player right now. And, and it makes sense why for a couple of reasons. A, if you look at his stats, he hasn't been doing that well. And B, Russell Wilson's out. So he's, um, so even, you know, there's really no faith in Geno Smith and the Seahawks offense. But if you look at his stats, um, so we're getting it over three and a half. And he's gotten that in every game so far, except for last week against Pittsburgh. Um, and I know that uh, the, the thought process as well, that was... Um, Geno Smith's first game starting, and that was against, um, and, and you know, he, he was two completions on seven targets. is not very good, but um, every game before that, he's, he's hit that. And I know that, again, that was with Russell Wilson, but I think that the game last week against Pittsburgh wasn't quite as indicative of how things are going to go normally. Um, one, you know, w one more start in the system. Geno Smith should be a little bit more comfortable. Um, I know that last week's start, he had a long week off the Thursday night game, but still, another week practicing with the team. Um, just another bet, another week, another week to, to get more rhythm and stuff like that. And B, the Saints defense is good, but it's not as good as the Pittsburgh defense. So you figure that the Saints will, or the um, Seahawks will do a better job passing the ball. Um, and then the, the third reason why I really like it is because the Saints number one cornerback, Marcus Lattimore, is probably going to shadow DK Metcalf. So, so you're getting um, the better matchup, right? The Saints don't have as good of a CB2. And Tyler Lockett is uh, more of like the He's like, you know, the, the kind of the possession receiver. I know he's known for these big games because he, you know, these 100 yards, two touchdowns, 178 yards, one touchdown. And he's kind of hasn't been good since, but he still had his over reception total, um, which is good. And he's, so DK Metcalf is more of like the, he's not as, as good of a route runner. He's just pure speed, pure muscle, pure chaos. Whereas Tyler Lockett is a little bit better, better of a separator. He's a little bit better of a route runner. So for quarterback like Geno Smith, who probably needs the players to be more open than normal, and might not be as comfortable going deep to someone like Metcalf. That's kind of where Lockett fills in. So the over three and a half receptions, I really like. Uh, I mean, this, the Seahawks still have no running backs. They're all still hurt. So they're probably going to be passing it a lot. Um, and you're, like I said, you're only getting him over three and a half receptions. So he could get that on, you know, two screen passes, two quick five yard button route, button hooks, and, and you're hitting that. So um, I really like that. I, I, I locked that here on Caesar. So like I said, looks like you're getting it at, at minus 140, and Pinnacle has that at minus 204. But even more, if you want to take out the VIG and see what the true line is, um, we can do that. So let's look at the no VIG fair odds. So it was minus 204 plus 150. So it looks like the true odds on that are minus 167, and we're getting that even lower than that number. So if you're unfamiliar with what no VIG fair odds mean with the juice um, stuff like that. Basically, it's it's just the price that the sports books charge to make a profit. So, um, you know, you you bet everything. Like, um, for example, most bets you see are minus one ten on each side, right? The um, that means that the true odds on that are plus one hundred. The the sports books just price up that bet. So, if two people place a hundred dollar bets on each side, the sports book will automatically profit ten. So. It's the price you pay for, um, you know, it's, it's how sports books make their money. So um, it's it's always important to a look at look at Pinnacle because they're the sharpest one out there um, for what they have the lines at, and then you take the vig from there. So it looks like like I said, you're getting the the no vig true line on this is minus 167. Um, if you want to give that a percent uh, chance of winning, minus 167 looks like that's a 62 percent chance of winning. With the minus 140, it goes down to 58 percent. So that's kind of the extra four percent probability percentage it's the extra uh 27 points just in the odds so um that's that's why i like to bet a lot it's you know it's seven and a half positive expected value um and just looking at the football reasons why i think it's a good bet as well and then there's another one that i locked that i like and it's this one right here that 
Alvin Kamara under four and a half receptions. Looked like looks like I got it at minus one thirty eight. Um, so this actually was much higher than one seventy four when I originally bet it. It looks like it's been the under's been hammered. Um, it's been bet so much that it's just gone down a little bit. Um, but it's still positive value. So one seventy four. Pinnacle has it. I got it at minus one thirty eight on Fanduel. Um, so if you want to look at Alvin Kamara stats, uh, I know that like he you know he's he's a premier receiving back. You know with Drew Brees, his reception total was crazy. He was basically a wide receiver that played running back. But with Jameis Winston, it's not quite the same. So I got it at four and a half, as you can see here and here on Fanduel. And it looks like he would have gone over that reception total in every game except for the last one against Washington. Um, you know, three receptions, four, four, three, zero, and that ugly loss to the Giants. And then last week he had five. Um, so the probability is in your favor for both of these bets, just as far as how the games have gone. And Saints quarterback Jameis Winston isn't one to check down to his running backs, especially for a team that has as bad a defense as Seattle. He's either probably going to chuck it deep, as Jameis Winston loves to do, or they're going to run it. And But you can beat Seattle both ways. Um, and that doesn't really leave much in the running game passing. So I think they're not going to utilize him in the passing game that much. And even if they do, he just can't have five or more than four receptions, which he's only done in one game. So uh, there's the football reasons why I like that bet. And same thing if you want to take out the VIG. So it looks like they have it at minus 174, plus 128. So let's take out, again, minus 174, plus 128. So if we want to look at the true line, they have it at minus 144, so it's not as good of a value play as the last one is. That's why it's down here at 2%, but still part of positive value. You're still getting the odds lower than the no big odds, and that's where the positive expected value comes into play. So um, I, I still like it. I know, like I said, the, the percentage of expected value isn't as high, but I still like it for my $100. Um, I think it's a good bet. And um, if you want to look at just the percentage again, so minus 144 is a true line. Looks like that has a 59% probability of hitting. And 138 isn't crazy, but it's a little bit below 50 or 58%. So you're getting a little bit the over 1% difference. Um, and like, I, it's, a good, it's a good bet both on, you know, just looking at the sharp lines on how Pinnacle prices it. And then, you know, for football reasons, I think it's a good bet as well. So um, just to recap, uh, $200 positive value bets. The first one is on the Tyler Lockett over three and a half receptions. Uh, getting that on, on this is Caesars at minus 140. Pinnacle had that all the way at minus 204. And then the second bet is going to be the Alvin Kamara under four and a half receptions. You can get that on FanDuel at minus 138. And Pinnacle has that priced at 174. Um, so that's going to be it for my two Monday Night Football bets tonight. Uh, you, you can catch this channel for tomorrow. We'll be just I'll be doing a, a review of how my positive value bets have done over the past week. Uh, I'll also be recording the NBA Odds Jam podcast. You can find us on anywhere you get your podcast. And if you want to hit me up, if you have any questions, if you want to give, you know, tell me if you, if you tail, I'd love to see screenshots of people tailing. If you thought it was a bad bet, I'd love to hear why. Um, you can find me, find me, excuse me, on Twitter at Modi underscore sports, or you can hit me up on my email address, Matthew at oddsjam.com. Uh, love to hear from you. And that's all I got for you. So happy betting, happy watching. And good luck.